All right, this video we're going to go over some updates made to the solder wrapper. So these updates involve supporting drawing automation for the wrapper. So these updates really took a lot longer than I had wanted to. Um, this ended up being an incredible amount of work to get this supported. Um, so what the general gist is, is that you're going to go ahead and do your normal stuff. If we're going to attach, go and double check to make sure we're dealing with an actual drawing document. And once we're sure that we have a drawing document, we're going to go and capture the views from that drawing document. So in this case, we're going to grab the first view. And we'll do that by getting the, our document, and then it's drawing document reference, and then the active sheet on that drawing, and then the views on that sheet. And then if the view is not null, we'll just go and delete the annotations just as a cleanup so you can run it over and over again for testing. And then we're going to grab the visible components from the view. So how that works is whether for SOLIDWORKS in the API, whether our drawing is a part like this, this is going to be the visible components, or if it's a an assembly like this, these are the visible components. And then once we get those components, we're going to go and grab the points that those components project up to the view, up to the sheet. And I will go into each one of these methods here in a bit because this was a lot of work getting this set up to be easy. And then we're going to grab, in this case, we're grabbing the edges, and we're grabbing the edges to grab the circular, the circular curves from it. Now you can either, you have the option to either just do the edges or do the points separately. I made it pretty flexible, so if you're not interested in, you just grab all the edges and then filter those out too. Then we have our dimension functions. I've added diameter, ordinate, and general so far. I'll try to add more in the future. Um, and so how this ends up working then, so an ordinate dim is a collection of points. So in this case, we're going to grab the min x and max y point, then the first circular point, and then we're going to get the max x and max y point. So these are some extension libraries, and I'll go over these as well too. And then we're going to tell what type of the dimension are we creating. Is it a horizontal or a vertical dimension? And the offset from the view, and then adding a diameter dimension, and just telling it what circular edge are we dealing with. Um, and then where's the leader for the draw, and where does the actual dimension text go? I work on trying to get this a bit more automated, maybe based on how the drawing. This one's always been a fairly manual, though, no matter. I really haven't felt found a super elegant way just to get that to go exactly where you would want it to go. So in the case of the assembly, it's the same process, just we have more points now. So let's go and run this through real quick. Um, so let's start with the let's start with the part drawing. Okay, so what we'll do is we're going to say test instead of assembly. We'll just switch this out for part. Okay, now let's go ahead and run this real quick. Okay, and now we'll click this. So it's going to go in through and delete everything. Oh, there's our little part dimension, and I think this is a. I think this makes sense. It's pretty easy to use. Um, unfortunately, drawing automation is always a bit of a pain. It's never. It's never been the easiest thing. So if we want to go and add another dimension real quick, we can go view dot add dim. In this case, let's add one off to the left right here. So we're going to say. We'll say points. And we're going to get the max, max x, max y point. Well, okay, sorry, in case, this case, let's get the min x. And we're going to go points dot get min x, min y point. All right, this is going to be a vertical dimension, or vertical. And we're going to say our 
And in this case, I think I'll add a, another option so you don't have to specify the X and the Y manually, maybe an enum, and then it could do some automation based on the view. But in this case, generally at this type of dimension, we're going to say, we're going to go um, view dot min x minus 0.25, and we'll go um, view dot center y. Okay, let's run that real quick. And this time we should have a extra dimension. All right, there we go. All right, so let's run the assembly one now. And the only thing you'll notice this time is things will take a bit longer to collect now, because we have more things we're dealing with. All right, pretty quick and easy. Um, so let's go through and explain these a bit more. Um, and there's still some more stuff to do, like with center lines and center marks. I gotta get perfected, but I'd like to go over kind of what the wrapper is doing in case anybody has any questions. So in this case, we're just using the normal method inside of SOLIDWORKS to get the visible components. And here's where things are going to get more complicated. Okay. So our points method takes a I enumerable of components and then it's going to loop through these to the points object. So this is, allows us to do collections pretty easy. So Here's where things get a bit more interesting. So we're going to select the view, then activate the view, and then we're going to set a reference to the comp name. Which I guess I didn't need to do that. I guess I'll remove that before I commit this semester. So, um, so we're going to get a array of vertex points based on the visible entities, based on the component. And we're going to tell we're only interested in the vertexes. So the vertexes are wherever those, where the edges end at. And then we'll create, we're going to create a quick temp list. And if our vertexes are null, we'll go and return because there's no point in doing any more work. And then the reference document is the document that the view is actually referencing. So every view references a document. And then we just want to check if it's an assembly document or a part document. And then we're going to start looping through the vertexes. So here's where things get a little complicated. So we're going to pass in the entity. And we're going to pass in the point, which is an, I'll go through that here in a minute. And then we have a couple optional. So let's go into this real quick. So a... So when we pass it in, we're passing an entity object, which is a pretty high-level object in the SOLIDWORKS world, which we can dig down to and we can grab the component from. And then we get that get point is an array of doubles with three index, with three members. <coughs> and then we tell if we're going to transform the position and a reference to the original component. And that's more of just to have it as a helper function. So we'll go and create our initial point which is a copy of the original points. Um, and then we're going to double check the components again. I guess we could remove that logic. We don't need to check it twice. And so once we get that reference, if it is null, we'll go and return. And here's where a little funkiness starts going on. The order of these are super important. It took me for it took a while to get these right. Um, so there's a math transformation library in the SOLIDWORKS API that allows us to deal with uh, matrix transformations. So this is what's going on now. Is initially, we're going to get the transformation of the component. So how has the component been transferred to the view? And that'll be an array of, I think, 15, num 15, yeah, 15 numbers that uh, respond to a, uh, sorry, an array of 16, 
which represents a f uh, a four by four matrix. Yeah, four yeah four by four matrix. And there's a couple values that are actually used in the matrix. Um, there's some pretty good articles online about it. Um, if I remember who had them, I will put a link in the video description. And then we're getting the how the we're getting the actual view transformation now. So how has the view been transformed into the sheet? So rotations and whatnot. And now we're gonna create our own point. So we're gonna use the math their math utility library from SolarWorks to create a point based on our point we're giving, and this will be our math point. And then we're gonna get a refer we're gonna get the sketch, and we need to then we're gonna get the sketch transformation. So how has the actual sketch of the view been translated? And here's then we're, we're gonna start multiplying to get the new short sheet coordinates. So the point of all this is to get that point rotate aligned with the sheet so we can easily reference it. So we have our, so first we're gonna take our point and we're gonna multiply by the component transformation and then we're gonna multiply it by the sketch transformation. Then we're gonna multiply it by the sheet scale transformation which is a function I had to write. And then we're going to multiply it by the view transformation. And this is just for that, if we're at the position gets transformed. So here, this deals with the sheet scale. So we're going to, we end up passing it in. So this is where this matrix, this is an example of these matrix getting created. And this is the only one that you have to manually do. I wasn't quite feeling why this one wasn't integrated. But there is a little bit more depending on what you're dealing with between a view or a between a drawing view or actually sketching on a view, sometimes these are different. I'm still working through documenting why they're different and when they're different. Um, there are, you know, I'll put a couple links. I know um, if you're familiar with our team, he has some pretty good articles on, I think, um, I can't remember the name of the site. I will put it in the video description about the transformations. Um, my goal of the wrapper was just to make them easier to use because I thought the current information was pretty painful. And from what I've gathered from reading, a lot of people tended to agree with me. So we'll go and get the properties from the sheet. And unfortunately, SolidWorks API does this quite a bit where they'll store a bunch of values in arrays and you just have to know which index of the array contains the value you're interested in. Um, I guess it's an efficient way to go about it. I don't find it overly intuitive. Um, because you have to go look up exactly what everything means in the documentation. But, you know, it's what we've been given, so. So now we're going to do some transformation. So the first one's the cosine of the angle, and then the sine of the angle. And then two is always zero. I don't exactly remember why. Um, I'll need to, I really need to go through the documentation more. I'll try to document this method a bit more. Um, this was, unfortunately, this is a little bit more trial and error. Um, there was some pretty good articles that helped me understand it, but this was a lot of uh, kind of just shooting in the dark. And then we're going to take the negative of the sine, and then we're going to get the cosine of the angle again. And then one... Then this had to do with view position. So this was useful when you start dealing with an actual view. Is that you'll have to, when you're sketching on it, you need to deal with its transformations again. And then here's kind of the primary one is dealing with the scales. So this will actually transform the scales so the viewpoints will render right. And if I remember right, these three aren't actually used. Um, if I remember right. Um, Yeah, there's three of these that aren't used, and when you form the 4x4, four four, it's the three on the bottom right. I think it's these three. Um, I will definitely try to get some more documentation on this before merging the master, but I was pretty excited to see some working pretty hard on getting this up to a passable level. Um, and I haven't made a video in a while, so I wanted to give everybody an update of, that the project's still actively being worked on. Um, 
So and after all that fuss, now that's for an assembly, so that's where things are a little bit more complicated. For a part, if the view is just a part, it's much easier, so we don't have to worry about the component transformations. We're just dealing with the sketch, the sheet scale, and the view transformation. And then we just return that back to the caller, and we'll just go convert those into sheet coordinates so they just make sense to whatever your chosen coordinate system is. Alright, and then each one of those is stored in an array and sent back. So, I'm going to definitely try to work in performance too to see how performant we can make this. I'm not really sure if there's a better way. Um, this does make things very easy though, because you imagine this saves an incredible amount of work having to deal with all that. Because now you can just grab all your points really quickly. Um, Thanks for watching, and if you guys have any questions, don't, don't hesitate to let me know. All right, have a good one.